Hey, this is the Mad Scientist Guy. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to review, test, and install this Echoworthy battery monitor. I will also go over the basic concepts of different types of battery monitors and what this one does compared to, say, a voltage-based battery monitor. And I will be using this to monitor a lithium iron phosphate battery in a motorhome. And then it is rated at uh, 100 amp hours and we'll go through all of the steps required to get this going. I want to talk a little bit about the different types of battery monitors available. So I'm in a motorhome here and here's an old-fashioned type of meter. When you press this you have uh, some idiot lights that come on and give you just some general indication of the battery and this is intended for lead-acid batteries and what it does is it measures voltage and it's not very good in as far as how granular it is it's not incredibly accurate but that is one method of determining the state of a charge of a battery uh, but it's uh, not the best for lithium so what type of battery is this so this charger works on a different concept it works on the concept of coulomb counting a coulomb is a basic unit of electric charge and it's equal to the quantity of charge transferred at one amp. And so that's just a fancy way of saying how much current is going through here at any given time. And so the reason that this is important for a lithium battery is that the lithium batteries, um, they you can check the voltage uh, during various stages of charge, but when you look, you have to look at the graph and, you, and this, it, it's such a small change. We're talking like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts and things like this. And it also depends on the temperature of the battery, how much is going in or how much is going out. And it's actually pretty hard to determine it by voltage alone. So what this does is this counts the number of amp hours going up and down. And the, the advantage of this is that you can turn this on at any time and you can understand how many amp hours have been drawn out of your battery at any time. And that's a huge advantage over a basic voltage measuring type of meter. Now there are two ways that you can make this work. <clears throat> For one thing, if you want to just be all automatic, you can simply um, do a couple of simple steps and the uh, computer here will not only size the battery, tell you the actual amp hours, it will set all the settings for you automatically. So I will describe that here for you right now. What you do is that you connect it up like I have and then you take your battery all the way to the bottom until the BMS shuts it off. Then you turn it back on, you, you start your charger so that you can get the battery to wake up, and then you press and hold this button when the battery is completely empty and that will set the empty mode. In other words, it will measure the voltage and it will reset it and tell you, oh, this is when the battery is empty. Then you just take your charger and you charge it all the way up to the top and then when it shuts off, then you press this button and hold it and that will tell the computer, oh, okay, this is the upper voltage and it will count the number of amp hours that it took to, to charge the battery and it'll give you an accurate uh, indication of the actual capacity of your battery. Now I just didn't want to take mine to zero and so there is a second way you can do that and that's through custom program which I will show you. One other thing to mention here is that this battery monitor will work on virtually any type of chemistry you have lead acid, lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate, or whatever. So I installed mine on lithium, but if you have another battery chemistry, then it'll work just fine. The monitor's Hall effect sensor can handle all the way up to 200 amps in current. You can also use systems all the way up to 100 volts. So if you have a 24 or 48 volt solar system or something like that, then it'll work just fine. Now this is very simple. This is your power cable and it's got a little connector and that goes in right there and then the bigger connector that goes into the Hall effect sensor and here's the Hall sensor now the direction is important according to the diagram this side away from this plug is the positive so I installed mine electrically first before I mounted it to the wall so that I could test it and go through all of the programming. 
Now wiring this is really straightforward. It's so tight in here that I didn't film anything while I was doing it, but basically you have a direction of the Hall effect sensor that you have to pay attention to. So this side has no uh, plug. The plug's on the other side. And that plug indicates the direction, and so this is the negative, and you have to have the plug towards the negative. Now it doesn't matter if you put the Hall effect sensor on the positive or the negative lugs next to the battery, just so that you have the direction uh, consistent. So for example, if you put this on the positive, then this side would go towards the positive lug. Now if you notice, look carefully, I know it's kind of dark, I have another wire going through the Hall effect sensor. And this is the charge wire for the solar. And the reason you need to do that is that all of your loads need to go through here. So if you're in a situation where you have a lug and the single wire goes to the uh, terminal, you know, like maybe you had a bus bar or something like that, that would be easier. But in my case, I just had a single charge wire in addition to the main load wire right here. And now all of the uh, energy that's going into the battery or out of the battery will go through this Hall effect sensor. So that's very important. So this wire right here, this is the data wire. And then I have it wrapped around and going into the um, uh, conduit here. And then you need to power it. So that's, here's the positive, and that's just going down to the terminal. And if you look very, very carefully over here, you can see that I have a negative right here. And so that's to power the actual meter itself. So um, one thing to also keep in mind is the height of this Hall effect sensor. In this little box here, I, I don't have quite enough room, so I have a board that I put over the top of it. And then I cut a little hole to um, allow the Hall effect sensor to come up just a little bit into this hole and I have to very carefully place that. And so that's something that you need to um, plan ahead of time and make sure that you have enough room for all this. Now the next thing is the size of this hole. I would say, I mean, I'll try and measure it and I, I'll put a, a title showing you the measurement. But this um, will not work with gigantic lugs. And so the lugs that I have here work just fine. But that's also something to keep in mind is that you do have a limit of the size of wire and connections that you can put through a Hall effect sensor. All right. So I'm going to very carefully put that back on there and put the lid back on. And with that lid back on, you can see that I made just a little hole there so it can come up a little bit without damaging that Hall effect sensor. And then I can just put this over here and everything will be nice and neat and out of the way. Now just as a test, I have the uh, inverter running the TV. So I've got the fire TV running off the inverter. And it's showing a negative 3.5 amps and about 45 watts. Currently it says that it is 0% uh, battery and zero milliamp hours. So we need to set this either doing the uh, drain it method where you take it to zero and then press the down button or we go into the settings and program in the parameters of the battery. All right, let's go into the settings here. Press and hold this for three seconds. And then we arrow down, We're looking for 11 CA. Okay, now uh, to advance over, you hit the minus button to advance over. So we're going to take it to right here. I'm going to add increase one, so that's a hundred. I'm going to advance over, and to get this to zero, I have to increase like this so it gets to nine, and then the next one will be zero. So it's a hundred amp hour battery. Okay, so it's one click here to save it, so that's a 100 amp hour battery. Now the 
full voltage. All right, so we selected it. Now we're going to arrow over. I wanted to set this at about 14.2. Not too high. So this would be a four. And then a one. Okay. All right, so now I've set in the parameters of the battery of 100 amp hours and 14.2 is the cutoff voltage. And now let's see how that performs. All right, this is now complete and the battery is now at 14.3 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the charger, the electric cord to the charger outside and then pull out. Now, as you can see, the battery now says it's 100%. And it's listing 100 amp hours because that's the value that I put into the settings. So we'll see how this performs. So let me go unplug that. All right, so it's unplugged. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a heavy load. I've got a DC refrigerator here. All right, now the refrigerator is pulling um, 158 watts. And so let's run this for a while and then we can charge it back up and see how this works. So the time, let's see, they, so we'll run this for a little while. The time is uh, 10.04 and then maybe we can run it for a little while and see how well the amp hours add up. All right, this has been running for about 30 minutes and we're doing about 10.7 amps. So if you take, uh, let's just say 10.7, roughly 5.3 amp hours. And so that's showing that uh, we're at 94.4 amp hours remaining. So that's, that's, a, that's consistent. And you know, this isn't gonna be exactly 10.7. I went and did something else and came back. But what it's doing is it's clearly counting down, it's counting the coulombs and showing the amount of amp hour capacity we have left. And up here in the uh, up here in the corner, it's showing that we have eight hours remaining on the battery and about 95%. And then if you notice down at the bottom, we have a negative on the amps being drawn, whereas when we're charging we have a positive. Because this can show the direction quite easily. So if I turn the charger back on, then it's gonna go the other way. And that's really handy. The only thing that I have a criticism here is that it says 141 watts, but it doesn't show the direction. So if it's charging, it shows the watts, and negative shows the watts, it's positive. I think it would make more sense if it had a little negative sign there, meaning that we're having a draw of 141 watts. So that's minor. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to let it charge back up and see if it starts regulating correctly. I'm curious to see how it will perform over a few, a few different cycles. I'm going to sh uh, poke the solar up, we'll come back in here, and then we'll shut the fridge off and see how it is. So here's my module. I've got a little bit of shade here, so it's not quite to full capacity. It's probably about maybe 5 amps. And then here you can see that uh, we're now only consuming 109 watts out of the battery versus about 150. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the DC refrigerator off and then charge it back up and see how it performs. All right, the module's in the sun now, so we've got 5.1 amps charging on this meter, and I want to go over to my charge controller and see what it says over there. So this one's showing 5.7 amps. So that's about a half an amp difference between the two, and I think that's within an acceptable tolerance. So if you look in the upper right, you will see a countdown showing the time to full charge, or basically an estimated time to full charge. And I think that's a handy feature based on the current charge rate to kind of give you an idea how much further you have to go.
In just a minute, I'll show you how this is intended to be mounted. But what I'm doing here is I am printing out a custom box to put this in so I can flush mount it. And if you would like uh, this SDL file and you'd like to print your own, then I'll put a link below where you can download it. Okay, this is done. Let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to clean this up a little more and then go see if it fits. Now here you see they've got these little tabs on the side and what you're intended to do is to cut a hole somewhere and stick it in there and then these little tabs will press in and hold it in place. Well I don't have any place to do that so I designed this little box and then it has these little tabs on and then I have this little slot here on the back where you can feed the wires and then it'll be flush mounted and it's real simple. So I'm going to mount it. I'm not going to put a camera there because it's so tight. I really don't have the room. But I'll just mount it and then come back and show you when it's done. In this Class B motorhome, there's so little room left that I'm having to put it in this cabinet. And I'm just going to put it right above my charge controller. I've got the Wanderer. And uh, if I haven't released that video, then I will soon and show you how that works. But this is not where I can have it all in one place. And then I can see both the state of charge how much is left and how the charge controller is working. So before I go, I just want to show you one other feature here is that this backlight display, um, if it has a load being drawn, then that will automatically come on. And if you would like to shut that off, then all you need to do is click the gear icon once and then that will shut off the backlight. And then also click it again and it will turn it back on. I just wanted to mention that. So I'll put a product link in the description below and thanks for watching.